Hi, this is Omni Bhartia, and this is special edition of TFR Insights for Open Mainframe Summit. Today, we have with us Jerry Edgington, your senior technical analyst at Western and Southern Financial Group. Jerry, first of all, uh, it's nice to have you here. Thank you very much. It's nice to be uh, here. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Polycephaly. Uh, it's an op uh, open mainframe project that was launched last year. Now, the name itself is a bit tongue twister. So I want to know the story behind the name itself. Okay, so the story behind the name polycephaly is a Greek word for something with multiple heads, like a two-headed snake or something like that, which you see in our logo. Um, the reason I chose that name for it was because I was trying to marry two different methodologies in building applications. There's a Java build and then there's a mainframe build, and those two really don't go well together. Um, the Java one, you know, the developers know all their scripting, or the mainframe, everything's hidden behind the scenes. So to marry those two together was kind of difficult. So that's why I called it the two heads, polycephaly. So it's kind of that name behind it. Yeah, no, it's an interesting name, and which I also, as you mentioned, I now I want to get into the technology part of it too. You did already mention it, but let's talk about it. Okay. Uh, the, the polycephaly project is mostly open source. There's one tool, of course, when you go to ZOS, you can't get away from IBM, but there is one tool that IBM, that I need from IBM, is called the IBM uh, dependency-based build. From there, um, this tool actually will go to ZOS using Jenkins and Git, pull the source code down the repository onto USS, Unix System Services on ZOS, and actually do a build uh, of the, uh, of the uh, application, so Assembler, COBOL, whatever, it will build that in PDS is on ZOS. So it's a it's a complete plugin for that component. So it's actually the build on ZOS components where it comes into play. So it's only the build part at this point. Perfect. Now, how are you involved with the project? You you did coin the name. I mean, not coin the name, but you came up with the name. How, talk about your involvement with the project. I am the sole developer on this project for the last four and a half five years. Um, I started this right after a share, I think it was Atlanta, and I got approached by somebody to join share, and then I was trying to figure out how to do DevOps and learn it with the mainframe. So this is long before Open Mainframe Project came out. Um, I've been working on this thing off and on for at least five, almost five years now. So I am the only developer at this point. I've had some input from IBM. They've actually taken some of my code and moved it into the IBM dependency-based build to help make it easier. Um, so I've been working, like I said, I've been working on this for a long time, basically myself. I'm looking for more people to help <laughs> once I get the infrastructure built. Uh, since you uh, you started the project, what problem that you saw at that point? I mean, you did touch upon briefly, but what problem that you saw that you wanted to solve that you created the project? The problem I was trying to solve was actually in three parts. I was trying to solve how to get a developer Make it, make it be a developer, not a mainframe developer or a Java developer or a distributed developer or whatever. I wanted to make them a developer. So I tried to make this product easy enough so anybody can use it from an IDE and can develop on any platform and push it to any platform. So an end-to-end -end development. I also tried to have to make it so that the application or the, the installation of this product was very simple. So I tried to reuse resources where possible. So my philosophy is I'm trying to put open source or make the mainframe work in open source instead of having the open source work on the mainframe. So I made it simple for the for the ZOS systems programmer to work on it. It's an SMP install, everything they know day to day. I made it easy for the Jenkins administrator to deploy and build. They can actually build and deploy the polycephaly code right using Jenkins and not have to know anything about ZOS. And then the developer can just develop on their ID and push it out. So there was those, all those pieces came into account of trying to figure out a way to make it basically a developer, a developer, not mainframe developer. So it opens up the mainframe to any kind of developer. So, because we've got, we've got shortages. We've got shortages on people like me. I mean, there's shortages on ZOS or application programmers. So there's a lot of shortages going on and how to address that shortage is gonna be a big problem in the next five to 10 years. So. so you have been, I think, if I'm not wrong, like four or five years you have been working on this project. Can you talk about uh, how the project has evolved over a year? 
you started alone, but as you mentioned, there are other companies like IBM, they are also taking, leveraging your code base, which also means the project is also evolving based on the way you see others are using it. So talk about the evolution. Yes, I um, want to say something real quickly though. There's a disclaimer, this is my project, not Western Southern. So I want to make sure that, you know, there's no involvement with, there's no, these are my opinions, but um, there are other companies starting to use the tool. Um, uh, there's a few, I don't want to name any names, but they're starting to use the tool. There's some issues. The, the way the product's evolving is the documentation is really the biggest component right now is working on the documentation and getting that up to speed so people can install it easier. Um, but the polycephalic code itself is easy to install. It's just getting to that point. So getting all the other components involved, installed until you get to that point. Um, but I mean, polycephalic basically is a deploy. You, you download the Git repository, you put it into Jenkins and deploy it to ZOS, and you can configure it. So it's pretty straightforward. It's all the other components having struggles to get there. So I've been working with other companies to document those components to get that moving along faster. So it's really not the polycephalic code, it's more of how to get to the polycephalic code, so. And you also mentioned that you know you are a sole maintainer of the project. Uh, are you looking to expand the community around the project, or you want to keep it your solo project? No, oh, no. I I would love to have somebody help with this project because I, I am not a Java developer. I'm not a Groovy developer. Um, I'm a Zero Systems programmer, so I'm trying to develop this with the limited knowledge that I have. And somebody's probably going to look at my code and start to laugh because it's it's probably not pretty, but it's working. Um, but I'd love to have people help with the project, get more involved with it, or even take it over. Um, I am I have very limited time at this point to make sure I can get things done, and my day job tends to move into that, so it tends to creep in on the, the actual development of this project. So that's why it's taken so long to get there. So what is the best way to get involved with the project? Number one, number two is what kind of people do you think are ideal for this project who you would want as contributors? My, the ideal person would be somebody that's already, you know, with involved with the mainframe um, from an application point of view, but also knows a distributed. And there's very few of those, but more of a distributed side to help, you know, build the project out. So it's, it's more of a distributed look, feel to it than a mainframe. Um, so, that would be ideal. Um, even new people coming to the pro, you know, coming into the mainframe world would be would be ideal. Anybody with a Java or a Groovy background would be great. Um, there's not a lot mainframe oriented stuff to do. Um, you can use the examples that are already out there to build another project or build another uh, another build routine. So it's not that I don't think it's that difficult to learn it, um, and it can be deployed. Right now, we're in the process of building the infrastructure with the, with the uh, folks from Open Mainframe Project. Once that's done, you'll be able to download it to your own IDE, play with it, build it, you know, check it out, and then we can actually work through promoting it to the baseline. So um, uh, hopefully, not hopefully, I, you know, that there will be more contributors to the project, so you get some free time where you can invest somewhere else. Uh, but uh, regardless, you know, uh, where do you see this project going in the next few months, or do you have your own, you're the boss of the project, so do you have your own roadmap, or you just move along as you see and deem fit that, hey, these are the changes, these are the improvements we have to make? Yeah, I mean, I do have some larger aspirations for this project, um, and that would include building a ZOS operating system using Git and Jenkins. So that would be, so like a systems programmer, you would have your Parm like proc lives, all of that would be in Git, all your customizations. You would install the server pack, and then from there you would run the build from, from Jenkins. So all of your all of your customizations for your ISPF, uh, your Pondlight Proc, all that customization would be stored in Git. Also taking on possibly the user mods, you'd be able to put those user mods back on. So instead of having you know PDSs for the storage of your customized controls for the ZOS operating system, you put that in Git and have that build. And I've actually had that working to some degree, it's just I haven't had a lot of time to work on it or play with it. So that's a big one. I mean, to be able to build a ZOS operating system and deploy it, that's huge to me. 
Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for talking to me about your project. And I, I, I do wish that, you know, the community will build around it and will grow. Uh, and I would love to talk to you again uh, to just learn more about where the project is. Uh, once again, thank you. Thank you.